Well, we haven't actually really done a video on our geese in a very, very long time. And uh, I guess a big reason for that is for most of the year, there's very little excitement or very little uh, effort required to uh, raise geese. So here is one of our groups of geese. And as you can see, they are uh, a lot bigger than they were. I think the last time we really talked about them much. And uh, yeah, they basically just kind of go about their daily business with very little uh, intervention or I guess really any kind of work required by us for the most part. Uh, obviously we do still feed them. They still get uh, locked up at night and let out in the morning. And uh, they do obviously go through some water, although significantly less than uh, the ducks we used to raise. I think that's one of the things about geese. They uh, really work well in a sort of a temperate environment. Speaking from the experiences that I've had raising animals and growing food, they, uh, they work really well with the season. They breed in the spring, which I guess is going to sound so basic, but they breed, breed in the spring, their babies grow up through the summer, and by fall they're sort of full size and ready to either, in this case, keep for future breeding or uh, bring inside for the table. And I do think that sort of longer term grow out, when you have access to pasture, because these birds can really uh, sort of collect a lot of their own food, although uh, not all of it, they do need supplementation and that's something we'll probably talk about in the near future because uh, it can be a bit of a limiting factor. But for the size of these birds and sort of what they can produce for you in uh, meat and oil, which is really the two big ones, it's uh, very, very little effort. But even though uh, geese are usually pretty sort of tuned into the local environment and weather patterns and time of year, they can get a little bit confused, but sometimes that can still actually result in uh, some extra productivity for us as the farmer that we weren't anticipating. So today I made a discovery in the hay barn we are september 13th i believe and little miss goose here fat lady goose is mildly confused she has a nest in there she had four eggs and she booted her there this morning to get right on this nest so i'm guessing she's going to be laying another one today so now we have a big thing of do we let her keep these and have to look after geese or goslings over the winter or do we take the eggs away we were kind of it was interesting because we were kind of wondering because this boy has gotten quite I'm not gonna say aggressive with us as you can see he doesn't care that I'm standing here but he's gotten very aggressive with the other geese that they are out with there's the other crew and these guys have kind of all been hanging around together for about two months now and uh, he's been really being very, very aggressive with, uh, let's see if he's going to do it here. Oh, no, he's letting Juliet and Romeo push him out of the way. Maybe they're all laying there. He's being aggressive with the two younger ones. Oh, Juliet's ran her out of the nest. This is interesting because this is definitely not the right time of year for everybody to be wanting to lay eggs. So obviously everybody is using this nest. So I guess we have a bit of a dilemma here. These guys are not happy and now these guys have been kicked out. So of course geese are waterfowl and uh, that is one thing. They don't absolutely need a large body of water by any means but they certainly do appreciate kind of year-round or as much as possible having access to uh, to water they're they're not like ducks they don't or at least like the mallard drive breeds they don't uh, play in the water quite as much but they do still enjoy it in the early season it's definitely important for breeding and whatnot but uh, throughout most of the rest of the year as long as they can uh, have access to a bit of water and in the summertime, we, we do give them access to these sort of wading pools and whatnot, which it's a daily chore to drain, or dump that over and rinse it out. But uh, it does keep them in good condition, which 
like anything, when you keep them happy, usually they're more productive. So we are definitely not new to raising waterfowl. In fact, kind of uniquely, waterfowl was the first sort of poultry we started with way, way back in 2008. We raised Cayuga ducks and uh, shortly thereafter Khaki Campbell ducks. And the whole theory behind having the two breeds was the Cayugas were more of a meat breed that was known for being broody. The Khaki Campbells were more of an egg laying breed known for not being broody. And uh, it actually worked really well for a long period of time. It was relatively simple and relatively enjoyable for the most part, etc. And we produced a ton of food from having those two birds. But the downside to the ducks, those were mallard derived breeds of waterfowl, breeds of ducks, is they required a lot of external inputs, which at the time, uh, when you're not thinking sort of sustainably, wasn't ridiculously expensive. It was affordable for what you were getting back because waterfowl products are high value. If you were actually going to go to the grocery store and buy duck eggs and duck meat, for example, you're talking a fairly heavy price tag for that. Now, the ducks were really good grazers and really good foragers, but when you compare that to the geese, looking back, in retrospect, it uh, it's, not, it's not even comparable. <laughs> now, going back to those early days where we tried all sorts of different things. I actually did have geese for a short bit. We had uh, pilgrim geese. This is one thing about the geese versus the ducks. If you don't have the space for geese, the ducks were the better option because they could use a smaller area of forage, of grass basically, uh, better. The geese required more space and that was one of the reasons why it, it didn't work and why we didn't stick with it. Then enter quite a few years later and thousands of pounds of duck meat and eggs later, we got to a point where uh, essentially we, we were a bit stuck on uh, some predator issues because the downside to the khaki camels and the cugas was they had to be let out. And we were having some issues at that time with uh, a raven and uh, without going into details it wasn't a battle we were going to, to win. So we made the decision to try sort of breed number two on my list of potential geese which was the American Buffs, because I had never raised them before. And I have to admit, looking at the time frame and the various pieces in the puzzle and how we get to where we are now, uh, for us, where we are at this point in our life, with the property we have, etc., the American Buffs are definitely uh, the best option, I think, of anything we've raised. We, we still get the advantage of getting some eggs, we get the advantage of uh, some relatively low-cost meat from them. They're very easy to sort of quote-unquote free-range. Now, our version of free-range is still behind a fence, but and they're also uh, very productive. They're definitely our cheapest meat that we raise on the property. Yes, yes. Uh, Semi-close tie with the sheep, but there's more overhead expense for them. So one thing I will say too about the geese versus the ducks and versus chickens is they are, I'm going to use the term that's already been coined, of slow food. They don't produce fast, they don't produce quickly, but they produce predictably and dependably in a bigger time frame of kind of pretty much an entire year by the time you go from start to finish. And uh, they really do do it at a very economical and even though we have some pieces to the puzzle to figure out at a fairly sustainable, in a fairly sustainable manner. That's a little bit of the history of sort of our experiences with waterfowl, not exhaustive by any means. Uh, certainly was kind of a big decision and like anything else, there's sad points in this, that and whatever with making the decision to move away from the, um, the ducks. But in the long run, uh, where we are sitting right now. It's definitely simplified things, significantly reduced the amount of water that we've had to use because uh, all breeds of mallard-derived ducks go through a lot of water compared to the to European domestic geese breeds. But yeah, we're basically very happy with the, uh, the switch and uh, would definitely recommend it to anybody as long as they do have space. You, you do need the space. I really can't stress that enough. <laughs> So I managed to get everybody out of here <clears throat> and I think we made the decision we're going to just take them away. These will make some lovely quiche or omelets or something like that. 
You can see they're nice, gorgeous big eggs. Uh, really, really weird having them try to sit and hatch out eggs this time of year. But we're going to take them. I've separated the other two so that the fighting will stop. And we're leaving the one group out here and we'll see. If she wants to lay eggs, we'll just keep eating them. But still, very, very interesting behavior from these geese. And as you can see, they certainly want to have some more babies. So that's a good thing for next season. <laughs>